welcome to the 11th lecture from chapter number 9 we will start studying a new topic today and that is cascading means joining dynamic logic gates if we join or cascade dynamic logic gates we we observe certain important observations which we have to address right so before we start cascade studying cascading problems let's have a small recap a small recap of dynamic logic gates a dynamic logic gate is implemented like this we have an nmos array that we have in a cmos regular cmos circuit and plus these two gating transistors this pmos and nmos connected to the single clock phi and we have two modes of the clock the first mode is when it is zero we call it pre charge and the second mode is when it is a one it's evaluate mode right so this is a small recap of dynamic cmos dynamic cmos logic that we have been studying in previous lectures the advantage is that it is faster because logic 1 is readily available at the start of evaluate period and if the output is search if the input combination is search the output is a logic high we don't have to make any switching so it's faster and we require lesser number of transistors right because for a regular cmos array we need two n number of transistors capital n we require two n transistors for cmos where this capital n means the number of inputs whereas here we require only n plus 2 n transistors to implement this n mos array and two transistors two gating transistors that are always present so this is 2 n versus n plus 2 the difference increases as capital n the value of capital n increases and the advantage is more but there is a disadvantage that cascading sometimes causes issues cascading of dynamic logic gates logic gates having this general structure they are problematic if we try to cascade them cascading means the output of one gate is driving the input of another gate right this is an example where we will study the effect of cascading and we see that there are some problems when we cascade dynamic logic gates right this is a a gate and an two gate and it is it is driving and it is driving a not this one not so this nand2 gate is driving a not gate and the inputs are one and one the both both inputs are one so the output has to be a zero and if the zero is applied at the gate of this mn3 or at the input of this not the output should be a logic one but this must be in evaluate period in evaluate interval in the pre charge interval they both are one or logic one vdd why because because phi is zero means this transistor is off and this transistor is also off because this phi is the same clock being applied to both of the gates so this means and this mn is on mp is on and this mp is also on so during pre charge interval it has to be a logic 1 vdd 
and we want this has to be equal to p d t because the p mos gating transistor is on for both of the gates so we have a vdd here and a vdd here but as the evaluate period starts what we are expected to have right we are expecting something where is the editor editor this one right we are expecting something like this now as the evaluate period starts the nmos transistor the nmos getting transistors in both gates are on because they are connected to the same clock phi hmm. all right so this is on and this transistor is also on right and we have a vdd here vdd here initially we have a vdd here and a vdd here so if this vdd is also applied here so when the inputs if the inputs are on a and b they are all they, are, they both are on and we are in, in the start of the evaluate interval this means this path is on this whole path is on and this vdd will start will start discharging itself the capacitance here will start discharging itself from vdd to ground similarly this vdd will have path this capacitance will also be discharging through this path right if ideally this should be this should produce a, a zero volts here because now the full nmos array including this gating transistor is on so ideally we should have a zero here and when we apply this zero here the output should be pdt this is the ideal case but what practically happens is a bit different than this ideal case. Why is it different? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see why is it different. Right. This VDD at the start of the evaluate interval, at the start of this evaluate interval, this VDD has to, this the capacitance here has to discharge itself from VDD to ground through this path. And the, resistance of this path is equal to 2rn if rn is the resistance of one nmos transistor the resistance of the path is 2rn whereas the resistance of this path is 3rn and it has it, this terminal has also go from vdd to ground so this discharge will take a longer time compared to this discharge because the resistance of this path is low and we know that the time constant is the product of the capacitance and the resistance so this path has a smaller resistance or a smaller time constant this path has a larger time constant so tau one tau of one is larger than tau of two so the disadvantage is that this V out two output will discharge itself from VDT to ground faster than this, and it will achieve a zero here. Once we have a zero volt here, before we get a zero here, but finally we get a zero here, and if we get a zero here after we have got a zero volts here then this zero is applied here so now this zero means that the output should be a logic one but now it cannot be logic one because for dynamic cmos circuit there is only one one to zero transition allowed it has discharged itself from one to zero and it cannot go back now cannot be one again because the charge 
that was accumulated here at the end of pre charge interval has already been discharged through this path so this one this one cannot cannot rise it this zero cannot rise itself this output cannot rise itself from zero to one and that is a real big problem because the output is supposed to be a logic one here it was erroneously logic zero before we had a final output here because of the difference in the taus here but once we get the right value at the input of this dynamic gate we cannot have the right output at the we cannot we cannot have the right logic voltage at the output because the only one to zero transition has already been taken it has to be has already been happened so there is no way we can go from zero to one now unless unless we have another pre-charge interval so during this evaluate interval we get a wrong result we get a wrong result at v out two we get a v out two is equal to zero volt which it should not be ideally it should be logic one so that's the problem with with cascading with cascading dynamic CMOS circuits. So what is the solution? There are many solutions. There are many techniques that address this problem. One of these techniques is domino logic. In domino logic, we have this inverter inserted. We have one inverter and that is static inverter. It's not dynamic, it's static that we studied in chapter number seven and eight. So it's a static inverter. We insert static inverters. How does the static inverter works during pre-charge interval? V out one and V out two, they both are zero. Why are they zero? Why aren't they one? Because V out one is the output of the static node. We have a VDD here, this means this is zero. So we have a VDD here, this means that V out two is equal to zero volts. So it's quite logical. And then in the evaluate interval, during this evaluate interval, even if the tau of this path is larger than the tau of this path, the output logic zero here, the output is logic zero here. And unless we have this path, unless we have this path, uh, unless we have this VDD grounded through this path. So initially at the start of evaluate interval, this is VDD. So it starts decreasing. It takes more time than this. So it this VDD discharges faster. This capacitance discharges itself faster than the capacitance here. And we get a zero volt here before we get a zero volts here before we have a zero here. But finally, we have a zero here. So this means it's a zero here, and we have a one here. A zero here, it, discharged, it has discharged itself earlier than this path. So we have a, we have a zero volts here. We have a zero, uh, we cannot have a zero volt here because uh, we cannot have zero volts here. Even this path is on, even this, even this MN is on, we cannot discharge the output here, right? Even this is on, we cannot discharge this VD, this capacitance from VDD down to zero because even even we have started the evaluate interval this transistor remains off why is it why is it off because this the capacitance here is yet not discharged so once it is discharged this capacitance was discharged earlier than this capacitance or this path will take a longer time to discharge and this path and through this path, the capacitance has discharged itself earlier, but still this VDD isn't moved to zero volts because this transistor 
is still not on and there is no path of discharge. Why, when will this transistor be on? When it will take its time, this capacitance will take its time, will discharge itself fully and will come to zero volts. Right. No matter earlier or later than this activity. But even if it com this activity completes after this activity, that's no problem. The zero volts and the output is the output here is VDD. Then after the activity, the required activity has happened in this NAND two. After that, this VDD appears here, and then this VDD is here. This transistor turns on. This transistor turns on. And then we have this VDD discharged to zero volts. So this the, the insertion of the static knot between two gates has ensured that even if it has ensured and the output is logic one then. So the insertion of what is the advantage we have got out of this static inverter right the obvious advantage is that even this path the capacitance here has discharged itself earlier than the capacitance here or in other words even if this tau one the discharge time interval for the NAND two gate is larger than the discharge time constant time constant for the NAND2 is larger than the discharge time of this knot, even if it is true, even if this charge, if even if the discharge time of the preceding preceding gate is larger than the following gate, even then we don't get the wrong output. So the static inverter introduces or corrects or corrects the problem that we encountered here when we cascaded two dynamic gates directly without the static inverter. But there are some disadvantages because static inverter, of course, it occupies some space. We need two transistors to implement this, right? In fact, we need two transistors to implement every NOT gate, every inverter. And a second disadvantage is that we can implement only the expressions that are not inverted. So inverting to implement inverting Boolean expressions, we need another gate and that introduces other problems. Right. That's all for today's lecture. We will continue studying dynamic logic gates in our upcoming lectures. Thank you.